Hi guys, my name is Gaurav. Welcome to the very first tutorial of Required JS. Today, in this tutorial, we are going to learn why we need Required JS, what is Required JS, and how to implement or use Required JS in our project. First of all, I am going to explain you why we need Required JS. Required JS, why we need that? Because in current atmosphere or current world, our, our websites are becoming very very huge and we are calling these to web applications as our applications are growing our code complexity is also go growing in a uh, big web application like Facebook uh, these are the big projects like similar we have other projects which are not well known but they are very big and in big projects we are not able to maintain our code properly for that uh, we are like facing some issues like creating the modules or files like suppose we have one we have one file and in that we are mentioning our core modules in one file and uh, other modules are in another file like that so what we are doing so for that what is a how can we resolve this problem so and what can be a solution so what we want we have the files okay which we can import include or require whenever we need in our code and what we can do uh, we can load multiple files in one file so that we can use or reuse our code in another files so uh, in like in simple ways how we are loading our javascript files so in simple ways or you can say why we need required js okay so best website to refer the required js this that is their official website that is required js.org if you want to read you can read so we have the problem which I mentioned like earlier the problem is our websites are very big now so these are bigger web applications so code complexity is growing as our website is getting bigger day by day assembly of code is getter hard get gets harder developer like we are the developer and we want so what we want to we want to create the modular code base so we can reuse our code and we whenever we hit our website it should make less http calls to load the javascript files so what is the solution solution is like we have the multiple modules and we can use those modules in another module using import require something like that so and uh, we can use or we can uh, load multiple nested files in that so this can be a case so how we in older days how we are using that thing so overway is first way is we, what we are doing so i have created a demo for that so javascript this is javascript without that so what we are doing so we are we have created the main.js file and util.js file util.js file is a, a main file and uh, one file and main.js is a one file so in main.js we are using a util util.js file right so but what we have done here we have mentioned main.js file first and the util.js in second line so what will happen whenever our web, web page will load our main.js file will load first and then our util.js util .js page will load it means what we'll get we will get error which will which will show like it is not it won't it won't be able to find the util.js util file so i can show you that thing so it is showing uh, utility is not defined right but what I'll do if I will cut this and paste before main.js it will work it won't show so this is called as synchronous loading of JavaScript files for that what is the problem we have to remember which file comes first and which file will come later so this is a very big problem in big projects we can't remember everything because there, there won't be one developer working on one project there will be multiple developers which are working on multiple files so this is one problem we have in currently so one more way is, is make the XHI request XHI request and uh, get the data and those data when, whenever you will get those data that data will come in a string way whenever you mail HTTP request like XHI, 
XML HTTP request it what it will do it will make the request and it will give you the data in string format right so for that what you will do you will give the you you want to create a convert string to a JavaScript function func executable code then you will use eval function so we have to use is eval but eval is not like a you can say some environment like a, it's not they don't allow to use this okay so this is one disadvantage of this approach so we can't use that we can't use that and uh, one is web worker web workers are what is that a web workers web workers are you can say the uh, might another way loads but it doesn't just it doesn't provide you the cross browser support it means it won't support in older older version of the browsers and it won't give you the like browser compatibility web, compatible website also and another way is uh, to write the document dot write that is load the script and it can load the script from other domain it maps how to browser normally consume the script but what is this in this over whenever we write document dot write it will block over paste till we over javascript file be loaded so this is one problem here and another is a head dot append child what we'll do we will uh, write over our append over skip tag and we will write the src and append to the overhead but what's the problem in that it it won't block page rendering but it so head dot append what it what it will do it won't block the page rendering but there will be a issue with asynchronous synchronous synchronous example like you you won't be a uh, sure like which file get loaded first and which file we getting uh, loaded later so uh, to avoid this solution we have the required js so what so we have discussed why required js uh, so in next tutorial we are going to learn what is required js